Welcome to Acorn to Oak with Penny Quail Pierce and co-host Matthew Donaghy. Within each acorn, there is the DNA that strives to be a mighty oak tree. All it needs to reach its potential for greatness is to be activated. You are the acorn. On this show, we will share with you the tools and guidance you need to grow into the person you are meant to be. And now your host, Penny Quail Pierce and co-host Matthew Donaghy. Penny and Matthew, I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, this is going out on the 4th of July, so I just want to wish you all a happy Independence Day. No, it's not Independence Day, is it? Happy 4th of July, anyway. <laughs> That's English, honestly. We're, we're absolutely useless. But there you go, such is life. So basically, I'll just hand over to Matthew so he can say hello and I can get my act together. Okay, take care. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Um, it's obviously going out on the on the 4th of July, so I'm hoping to say that England won the football. Um, so... Um, <laughs> the results aren't in yet, are they? So... Uh, <laughs> no, not, not currently. So... Um, <laughs> Slightly optimistic, but you've got to be optimistic. Well, yeah, absolutely. So. You know, um, I must admit, um, I'm not really a big football football fan, but um, that's obviously English soccer fan. Um, but uh, you know, it is what it is, and it's uh, always good to have good, uh, nice competitions where everybody enjoys themselves. So, um, you know, it is it is just what it is, isn't it, really? Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm not into the male side of football, but watching the females play, um, the passion and the drive you see on that pitch is far beyond how the professional man... Um, we were discussing it the other day, and it's kind of like when you're getting 100 grand a week, whether you perform or not, um, it's like their passion and drive has gone. Um, but with the young teams now, um, it seems to be very different, especially with the women. It's like they're fighting to be there, which I, I just think is brilliant. Um, football for me, watching men is, is boring. They all just seem to dive on the floor. So it's been really refreshing to see. Um, Excellent. Women <laughs> Uh, again, as I said, I'm not really, uh, I'm not really a fan, but um, you know, it is, it is just fantastic, as you say, when you actually see people who are uh, living their passion where, uh, when they're doing sport. It's, uh, it's quite impressive to see it all. So yeah, so um, just basically catching up with myself here and doing all the technical stuff. So uh, we're here this evening and we're going to be chatting. <coughs> I'm going to hand that over to to uh, Matthew just to talk about what we're going to be talking about, which is always good. Yeah, so we're, we're talking about heart-centred living. Um, you may have heard people say... Um, what ask ask your heart or heart intelligence and you may have also wondered well what does that actually mean um now heart intelligence is what i would class as your emotional self so the heart has as many neurons in it as it's got as many as the brain i don't want to be quoted on that but i don't think it's got as many neurons within it as the brain but scientists have proved that there are neurons within the heart and we associate them um, with thinking or some sort of more, more intelligence than just a muscle, than just the pump that the heart's said to be. So when people talk about gut feelings and things like that, you, you can be thinking a situation through your head um, but what your gut is telling you, or what I would say your heart is telling you, could be something completely different. So the way I like to sort of explain it is your brain's a computer and there's a fantastic tool um, and it will work out situations and do calculations and any number of wonderful things. The heart is very much like an emotional computer and it can be quite 
quite black and white in its truth that you you can ask your heart a direct question around how you feel around a situation and you'll get a direct answer so for me the heart is like the the emotional computer within you um and i live a heart by making a decision no matter how big or small i'll let my brain think about it and obviously you can rush if there's budgeting involved do that with the brain but then I'll check in with my heart and ask whether this is the right thing to do or whether this is the next move I need to take. Um, so if you imagine you're buying a house and you could you could write down a list of to, uh, pros and cons as to why this house would work. It's more for me about checking in with the heart and saying, is this house right for me? And it's, it's that intelligence that we're going to be talking about tonight that gives you a good idea of what we're going to be covering i think uh, i think for me also um coming obviously from the medical background that i come from you know we as um matthew was saying you know we've got just as many neurons in in our heart and also in our gut so when we actually turn around and say i'm going with my gut feeling don't, don't think there's no neurons down there to actually do that uh, air, air intuitive thinking that the gut has. Um, so, you know, yes, you know, uh, we were talking about following a, a path with heart and it's, it's uh, you know, the heart is, as I said, full of neurons. It's, it has its own intelligence and from an energetic point of view, obviously has its own energy field and vibration. And we forget that, you know, so we've got three centres that are actually um, doing our thinking and our intuitive thinking and leading to levels of consciousness as well. Um, so when you talk about following a heart, uh, you know, a path with heart, you know, we have to understand the whole process of making war and the war is within us and without us and how it begins and ends you know wars are rooted in ignorance and misunderstanding and you know without understanding it can be easier easy for us to become frightened by the fleeting changes uh, that happen in our outside world and the inevitable loss and disappointments and insecurity of aging and death and not just of ourselves but obviously our loved ones also and this understanding leads to the fight against life uh, you know, running from the pain or grasping at security, looking at pleasures, uh, you know, um, fleeting pleasures uh, that by their nature are never going to be able to truly satisfy us. You know, our war against life is expressed in every single dimension of our experience, both inner and outer. Our children see on average 18,000 murders and violent acts on the TV before they finish school. You know, the leading cause of injury for women in the West and East is the be uh, beatings by men they live with, but also women beating men and committing verbal violence. You know, we carry on these wars within ourselves, our, you know, our families, our communities, amongst races and nationwide. <clears throat> but the war between peoples are just reflecting our own inner conflicts and fear. And, you know, when we actually get out of our own personal dramas and we start realising that, uh, you know, who we are affects the global community, it makes us realise that in looking at heart intelligence, looking at following a, a path with heart affects all of us. You know, we are a global community. We're not living in isolation. And 
we think, well, we'll just take care of our needs and, you know, sausages to everybody else. Whereas, in fact, actually, it is the interconnections between us in energy, which is giving us the global consciousness that we're having now, that it's okay to make war. It's okay to have people starving on the planet, when, in fact, an awful lot of us live with plenty. And, you know, it's about time and a path, you know, with the path with a heart is actually taking a stand and going, actually, it's about time we started looking after the whole family. And when I'm talking about looking after the whole family, I'm talking global. Yeah, you know, there shouldn't be people who have to drink dirty water. There shouldn't be people who are in suffering and pain. You know, it's about, you know, growing up as, as you know, the human race growing up and saying, it's about time we say no to this. It's about time we started actually looking after the elderly, looking after the people who can't look after themselves, looking at, you know, the third world, looking at just sharing, learning to share, le truly learning how to share. Um, and for me, you know, it, this is what makes it, as you can probably hear by my voice, but it, this is what makes me absolutely passionate. It's like, hello, let's wake up. Let's take care of what we've got. Because if we don't take care of what we've got with, heart, with our hearts, then it's going to crash and burn. And more people are going to have to live in suffering when there is no need. So uh, just, just handing back to Matthew so he can put his two, two pennies worth in. Yeah, I think, I think it's really important that um, for everyone to realise that not only can this, can this make a difference within your own life to deal with sort of the emotional baggage of your past, but as a collective, if, if we were all more mindful and we all learned how to how to live in the in in the heart and trust that 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 life would be a very different place. I mean, we I think we've said on previous shows we man spent hundreds of billions of, of dollars trying to get into space and discover the universe. Which, um, but then we can't. We still have hunger and we still have homeless. And we think we we have sayings like charity starts at home. Well, we should just start. We should say charity starts with your own planet, um, because that's where we really need to get back to and and realise that. I mean, like you said, with the elderly people, that it, we've only got the freedom in our lives because they've given up some of the freedom in in their lives, um, and so to hear sort of the elderly being being sick and not looked after is, I think, it's it's terrible. Um, and everyone just seems to shun it and sort of shove it under the carpet and say, oh, well, there's nothing we can do and that's life and that's how the world is. And it's kind of like, it is only as long as we allow that. Um, and if enough people start living a certain way or start having a certain view, it does become a movement and then a movement turns into something that is, is life changing. Um, and I think it's very a very we're in that very close time at the moment especially with everything that's going on with the environment and and that sort of thing it's uh things are really shaking up at the moment it's uh, really quite a, an exciting time to be alive because there's so many things within humanity that i think are going to take a a big change um so i think real, real yeah exciting. i yeah it is exciting some of the, the the changes have been exciting but it's also you know um basically there's there's quite a few people who are actually saying no to an awful lot of things um i uh, am i you know is the status quo just going to be the status quo or am i actually going to be somebody who shakes it up uh, and let's have a little bit of um you know, world changers, uh, people who are passionate um, to put their lives into profound service uh, so that the others will 
you know, it, you know, one of the biggest diseases on this planet right here, right now, in this time, is apathy. People who couldn't be bothered, who don't want to shake up the status quo, who don't want to put their heads above the, pul the, the pulpit or, you know, the, the wall because they're frightened they're going to get shot or whatever it is. And it, it's going to need, you know, we need to grow game changers. We need to encourage, you know, epic spiritual entrepreneurs. We need to encourage people who just turn around and want to uh, make an impact in this world by putting themselves in service to, uh, you know, the global community and just getting people to think about it. It was really quite interesting this week has been an interesting week for me. <clears throat> We've had a lot of change at home. Um, my uh, childcare lady has changed. So one is going into nursing and another one has just come on board. And she's a lovely lass. She's 22. And we were just talking about my son and why he is, you know, some of the reasons why he is, why uh, the way he is. And, you know, as a homeopath, I took the decision that he wasn't going to be vaccinated. And he's a very uh, energetic, lively, happy uh, little boy, uh, outstandingly so. And he's very articulate. Uh, you can see him thinking through, things through. And uh, it's like he does a, a health and safety uh, audit on whether I should take that leap off the off the. Um, trampoline or not and you can see him work it through and go no I can manage that and then he does it and it's really interesting to see him uh, alongside some of the other children who have gone through vaccinations and I said you know vaccination in the 50s the 60s and the 70s was crucial because we had diseases that uh, needed to be vaccinated against. But actually nowadays, the, there aren't the diseases unless they're in labs and being researched on. We don't have the disease processes in the West that we need to vaccinate so strongly against. And, you know, it, when you look at the big picture and you realise that the correlation between vaccinations and the huge amount of autoimmune diseases that are now present on the planet, and you look at it and go, ooh, there's something going on here. And, you know, for me, obviously, um, with my background in science, and I just look at it and I said, yeah, there is no such thing as a coincidence. If we're having huge amounts of new mm -hmm. autoimmune diseases since we started vaccinating, there's a key there. There's a root cause there. And you look at it and I mean, I get horrified. Uh, I must admit, with the amount of new vaccinations there are on uh, and people are, the governments are actually persuading us to give them to our children or our teenagers, you know, our uh, teenage girls now are being given um, vaccinations to stop cervical cancer and they're looking at ones for breast cancer and they're just not realising that they're introducing a foreign protein into you, your, your physical being. And that foreign protein is going to have side effects. And those side effects are going to cause breakdown in immunity and breakdown. And this is where I was talking about war, introducing war into our children. Whilst, you know, their immune systems are warring against white blood cells, red blood cells. They're causing untold damage. And we haven't done the research. We haven't done the research which is going to show us whether this is causing it or not. And, you know, we blindly 
say, oh, yeah, that sounds like, you know, I, I need to have the, my child vaccinated or this or or that, or I need to take the antibiotics or I need to take statins because, uh, you know, my cholesterol is bad. And, you know, the, the absolute correlation between statins and Alzheimer's and dementia is been long proved, yet we still stuff statins into people's mouths and say, take it because your cholesterol is high. And, you know, not thinking of the long term consequences, not looking at the big picture, not actually saying it might be a good idea to somebody and allowing them to make the choices. You know, um, Again, it was really interesting. A few years ago, uh, they tried to, I have, uh, I had a little bit of a macular bleed, which is just behind the eye. One of the um, veins um, uh, uh, basically uh, popped and I, I had a little bit of a bleed. And they, I was obviously sent to the eye hospital and had all of the tests and this, that and the other. And they said, well, you've got a couple of choices. We can give you injections into the eye which are steroids uh, and something else and I just said okay well hand me the data about this injection and halfway down the list it wasn't the last thing it was halfway down the list of side effects was sudden death and I thought hello <laughs> right I'm going to be taking that one then you know and, and basically said to the medics Forget it, I'm not taking that. Anyway, so we'll see you on the other side of the break. Uh... Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Kathy Williams, host of Sexy Mom Abundant Life radio show on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. On the show, we explore living abundantly in every area of your life. Ways to let go of limiting patterns and beliefs and to step into the flow of creativity and possibility, knowing you are supported by the universe. We are talking about your life. Ever wonder, is this as good as it gets? No, it could be so much better. At Acorn to Oak, we know you are seeking more happiness, joy, unconditional love, financial freedom, passion, and purpose. Find your unique mojo and live an extraordinary life. Want to know more? Contact us at our website, acorntooak.org.uk. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your football buddy, your football buddy, or you, your best man, your worst man, you, your dog walker, your cat jogger. While one in three adults has pre-diabetes, with early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. Hi and welcome back. Um, you know, uh, I suppose going uh, talking a bit further on, um, it was really quite interesting in one of the London newspapers, and this was probably about maybe 10 years ago, maybe even longer than that. And they did a, uh, obviously it's the, there's a column in the paper with the deaths, the births and um, deaths, births and weddings, that's right. And they actually had um, something in, in the death 
part of the page. Obviously, they haven't got very many deaths to uh, to talk about. Um, they actually had um, uh, a write up on the death of common sense. And it was really cool. I can't remember the whole thing, but it, it was highly amusing to the people, obviously, who read it. And the Telegraph paper in, in the UK is is quite a, it's one of the top papers in the country. Uh, so an awful lot of people read it. And it was quite uh, amazing how many people, you know, put their thumbs up and went, yeah, we agree with that. You know, common sense uh, seems to go out of the window when we're war, we're having these internal battles with self. And, um, you know, Chris was just sharing on us on the break, you know, when when you when you have to have a warning on a superhero costume, uh, making sure that people say, you know, wearing this costume costume doesn't allow you to fly. You won't be able to suddenly fly. And we were laughing, well, both of, all of us were laughing about it and went, yeah, it's just really, it's really hilarious that, um, you know, people have to put warnings on superhero uh, uh, costumes. But that's how ridiculous um, our world has become on occasion. So you just look at it and go, you know, one of my favourite sayings is really that's you really think that or are you really <laughs> going to do that and because we've all been you know hypnotized into you know taking authority and thinking they're telling us the truth without using our own innate intelligence and you know following a, a path with heart is actually you know again it's taking responsibility for ourselves and the decisions we make and you know looking at everybody else you know with a skeptical look on our face going uh-huh that may be your opinion or that may be your perception but it's not mine. Hang on a minute. You know, if I'm being to told a load of baloney, well, why am I swallowing it? And, you know, that's one of the things I think uh, at Acorn to Oak, and we would love to get over during these shows, is whatever you do, don't take anything anybody else says, about, says to you at face value. Always do your own research. Always look into it yourself. And if it doesn't go right with your gut and your heart and your head, for heaven's sake, just don't do it. You know, and it's but we feel like we're being pushed into yeah you know, a cattle market and you have to uh do this at different you know different stages in our lives you know children of this age need to take uh exams so that they can be streamlined into the careers that people think that they should have and if they're good at sports then obviously you know they're going to be encouraged into sports and stuff like this and if you're good at math then you're going to be Become an accountant, whether you like it or not. And, you know, you know, there's all sorts of screaming, and you know, we're not allowing the individual to grow at the pace that they need to grow at. And I think, I suppose, I'm so passionate about this because, you know, I uh, was dyslexic. And I'm still dyslexic uh but i've you know i've got strategies in place and i couldn't read until i was 13 and people just turned around and looked at me and went oh penny you know she's thick whereas in fact it had got nothing to do with my intelligence level it had got to do with my perception and how i perceived language and how i perceived different letters you know I've gone on, you know, I've, I'm an author of three books. I run, a, you know, a successful uh, training company. I've gone on to talk, you know, to teach hundreds of people. You know, I couldn't do that if I didn't have my innate intelligence and be able to use my heart intelligence as well as my rational mind. You know, but we get pinholed into different things. And that doesn't mean that we can't change and grow 
as long as we allow ourselves to do that instead of being sat on by authority or authority figures. So I've had a little bit of a rant, so I'll <laughs> thank you for a stupid <laughs> Yeah, I think well, such, she... such great points. And I, I think um, as, as, as a race or as a, a whole planet, it's almost standing up and saying, look, we've made some mistakes here. Um, because like you were saying, a lot of a lot of the diseases that we have in modern day, um, we didn't have 100, 200 years ago. And it's certainly not something they have in some of the indigenous tribes that are sort of still around in um, sort of cut off areas. And these, I've watched the program, David Attenborough is our, our king of, um, of uh sort of the planet on natural uh, and that natural also, world indigenous yeah. tribes yeah and um he was saying that actually a lot of the indigenous tribes won't allow sort of modern people into their village because we bring disease and we bring suffering um to which is something they're not they're not aware of it's not something they experience of course we're all going to have certain issues, dental issues and, and that sort of thing. We all have teeth. If we don't look after them, we're going to have dental issues. But but when you look at the diseases that we have in the modern world now, I would say, and I wouldn't, I just assume that, but I would say half of them are probably caused by the drugs that we're shoving into people's bodies and the chemicals that we're using um, to combat different things. So you watch a watch an advert for a medication 90% of the adverts telling you what the side effects are, not what the drug actually does for you. So we're, we're sort of throwing things out and we don't, very much like Penny said, we don't, we don't know what the repercussions are until 10, 15, 20 years later when we discover that it's actually massively harmful. Um, take something like asbestos in the, the 60s, 70s and 80s. Asbestos was one of the la largest used um, construction materials in the UK and around the world. And it was only 20, 30 years later when hundreds of thousands of people have died from it that we did the tests and realised it's actually a toxic <coughs> material. And we're covering buildings and houses and all of these things in this material that at the time, it was after the war, so it was a cheap, easy material to construct. But they didn't think of the repercussions then. And I mean, the, well, the 10, 20 years when we were using it and everyone saying it's a great product, this is exactly the same as we're doing with the drugs, the things that we're throwing in our bodies. Um, well, it's not just the drugs either, Matthew. It's, you know, when you, when you actually look at modern farming um, methods, you know, the big fields, the yeah. getting rid of the shrub, uh, you know, the, the shrub row. I couldn't, I could, sorry, I couldn't get my teeth back in. Um, but you're <laughs> looking at it and you're looking at, you know, um, you know, genetically uh, enhanced crops, uh, yaka, yaka, yaka. These were all started off again back in um, the 60s and 70s. It was an experiment. They were meant to be doing an experiment to see if they could produce more from uh, this, this modern way of farming. And sure. um, in, in, in between that, in the 19... Uh, 50s if you if you had one apricot it, it was you know really nutritious it had all the vitamins it was allowed to ripen on the vine etc 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 so they were power packed full of all yeah. of the wonderful nutrients that we need and you know research has stated quite plainly that you know, to get the same nutritional content of that one apricot, you'd need to be eating 56 apricots now because of the lack of the nutritional content. And you just look at it and go, wow, when are these guys going to wake up to the fact that this experiment in modern farming techniques just hasn't worked? 
because even yeah. the way that they plow the land, you know, in olden days, you know, in olden days, that sounds like I'm talking about the 19, <laughs> 1800s, but they used to plow the <laughs> land around the content, con, uh, the contours of the field. And in doing that, the nutrients were not washed out by rain. They were actually retained in the fields. Whereas now you've got these acre fields, you know, 10 or 15 acre fields where they're just plowing up and down and they're not doing it to the contour. They're actually, a, what they're making is like a, a river, rock, rivers where yeah. all of the nutrients in the, the actual um, soil are washed out and go into the nearest river and kill most of the fish or what, you know, whatever, whatever actually happens. But it's really interesting to realise that, you know, governments need to, or, you know, the Department of Agriculture or whatever, just need to say, hang on, guys. You know, we're losing the nutrients. The food is not doesn't have the nutritional value that it had 20 or 30 years ago. You know, we need to look at this and maybe realize that we need to be more organic and holistic in our farming methods. And I know people, you know, different pockets around the world are beginning to do that and they're beginning to see that things are, are, are actually coming back into homeostasis or back into balance. And it's the same, you know, when you look at it and just go, well, the hedgerow is gone and everybody's panicking because the bee population has has dropped 65% on the planet. Therefore, you know, the crops are not being um, pollinized the way that they used to. And we're just looking at it and going, why are we messing around with nature? Nature's got it covered. <laughs> you know, it's when man suddenly decides they know better that we actually start getting into problems. And this is why, again, I, I'm so passionate about discussing a path with a heart, you know. The heart knows that we need to take care of our planet. The head is just raping it for its resources. And it's it yeah. it really does uh you know, I, I I can rant on this about this not just for an hour, I can do it for days. But <laughs> it's yeah. you know, when we actually really begin to look at it uh and start taking responsibility and the, the you know the responsibility lies with all of us to do something in our own unique way uh which you know if we allow our own unique ways to come together it's pure genius and we will start really beginning to change and say to the governments this is not good enough we need to we need to stop this. And what is so fantastic is, you know, the youth, you know, the teenagers, the youth actually get this much more than us as adults. They really begin, they really turn around and go, you know, what's happening to the, you know, the snow leopards? What's happening to the, you know, the different species that are being overhunted and therefore they're, they're on the brink of extinction? So, um, again, it's handing back to Matthew to see his thoughts on this. Yeah, and it's, it's really interesting when you when you have these 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 chats and, and different things come in, because the thing that ties everything together and is the common. Uh, it's the common thing of all of these things that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that we've been talking about, so. So the drug come, uh, the drugs that we supply for different things, and it, it's it all comes down to money at the end of the day um, for me, or that's how it seems. It's um, the reason they first wanted to start seeing if we could produce more crops is because they said we need more crops to feed people, and this is why we're doing it, and we're doing it to try and produce more more effective vegetables and that sort of thing. That's not true that what they're actually doing is trying to produce more crops for less money. 
and try and sell more. It, it, it all comes down to to greed, and I think if, if I'm, I'm guilty just as much as everybody else, we we get set in this way that money has this or, or has this power over us almost that we we get sort of starry eyed and think oh well we 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 need money to be successful and it's like the the race has gone crazy on on greed um you look at some of the way people treat each other in the street um over money and and things and you, you, for me it's it, it is that common denominator that everything comes down to and i think that's how mankind has has got lost we've got we've got lost in that greed in, in the delusion of sort of making money and and doing well and all this and very much when you if you tuned into your head on a certain situation your head may tell you to go for it because you could make x amount of money which means you could retire at a certain age or, or whatever it is whereas if you ask your heart your heart may give you a no just because it doesn't feel right because again it's, money's it's... great however it's do you feel good about how you've earned your money? Did it, did it serve people? Um, and did it serve more people than yourself? Whereas most people are thinking, well, I can make 50% on everything I sell. And, 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 and it's just that <coughs> greed element. And I think that's where humans have really got quite lost on it um, a little bit. Um, I think for, for me, for me also it's the it's the lack of compassion towards each other you know we know we have uh, mountains food mountains in europe i don't know what it's like in in the uh, united states where you know people have, have produced depending on obviously what season it is and we have a, a multitude of food stored in warehouses you know slowly rotting but we're freezing it or we're, we're keeping it chilled so it lasts longer why on earth are we not sharing this with the third world i'm sorry but yeah. you know, if there's people no nobody on this planet should be starving we produce enough food to feed the world and it yeah. is unfortunately governments or well we're not going to we're not going to give it to them they're going to have to buy it and you know if that country is not uh you know obviously financially stable enough to to bring in goods from overseas then we refuse to give it to them for free and you just look at it and it wastes and it rots and you know, you just look at it and go, well, just spread. Well, if they spread it on the fields <laughs> as manure, maybe we can get the nutrients back. Hey, <laughs> that's an <laughs> yeah. idea. And it's just looking at it and just going, it it is so bizarre the way that we have allowed as human beings, we have allowed uh governments and things to you know to control us whereas you know there's nothing like a good revolution every now and again um and, and actually turning around to the governments and saying no this is this is ridiculous uh it doesn't just it just doesn't make any sense and if you if you uh, uh you know you uh connected all of the dots it would be a clown's face making a fool out of you and a fool out of me. And you just look at it and go, you know, but the one thing uh, that we've lost in, in our society today is the ability to communicate. And, you know, it's communicating to each other and just going, actually, you know, that, that's not me. I, I don't want to buy into that. That's that's actually rubbish. And, you know, as we lose, um, it's the technolo technological age, you know, technology, is uh, because we're communicating by text or by uh, WhatsApp or by Instagram or Facebook or, you know, and we're not actually sitting down and uh, with each other and talking and really get into the the nitty gritty of conversation uh we we don't know how other people are thinking and if 
that's how we are controlled is you know isolate everybody they don't know you know if we actually allow people to come together and converse more people are going to turn around and go yeah why is that what's this about what's that about could you can you explain this to me and people who have a little bit more life experience can help and bring enlightenment to other people you know uh, we can teach our kids better manners we can turn around to them and say you know you can choose your own path you don't have to listen to the teachers or the career uh, counselors or whatever it is and actually getting people to start saying hang on hang on a minute why is this happening what are we not seeing and uh, uh, allowing ourselves to lift out of our own personal stuff that's going on and see a bigger brighter view of the whole of humanity and you know that that's my take on it it doesn't need to be your take on it but it's just really you know beginning those conversations so we can get people to engage which will then make them less apathetic and more wanting to be part of the conversation so you know um those are my thoughts on it what what's your thoughts on it matthew totally agree when when you said we you like the sound of a revolution i mean i think we're we're, we're very much much in that at the moment um uh, I don't know if the Americans know too much about what's going on in England at the moment, but we're having this Brexit going on, and it was a, it, it's a long story, but I'll, I'll put, make it brief. Um, we joined the European Union. It hasn't worked out for us um, as we had hoped. More of the country have said that we would like to leave than, than had said that they want to remain. The government had made so many deals and so many what we call brown envelopes, which is something you get past, which is usually full of money and uh, you don't say anything about it, but the deal happens. And it was so it's been so clear to me that the government have made so many deals behind our backs with various different other prime ministers saying, yes, we can do this and yes, we can do that, that when England said we want to leave, the government suddenly went, oh, shit, well, that's not in our plan, because actually their plan was completely different to the plan that they were selling us. So governments can be very dishonest and hide things. And this whole thing has been going on for, what is it, almost a year now, isn't it? Um, and two it's years, all because really, yeah. the government have made yeah two years made side deals that they haven't told us about they they're the ones that have been dishonest um so we can't even make a simple decision on what's going to happen now um and i think it, it it's almost global we need to we need to be firm on our decisions and if you don't agree with some of the things that the government was saying like we we have to live by the law um however we don't have to live by the by any rules that's set by a government or anything like that. Um, we can choose to live a different way. And I think the more people stand <coughs> up, and you're seeing it, especially around the vi environmental stuff, um, where, where people are standing up and actually speaking their truth, um, rather than just buying into the fear of what we're told um, and being worried about what, what would people say if we did stand up and speak our truth um, and I think that's what stops a lot of people it's just the fear around oh well, will I, will, am I going to be made to be a scapegoat are people, am I going to am I making any sense in the first place and even just having people in fear living in fear is stopping yeah. them from living their, their full potential um, so whatever you do just allow yourself to have some great conversations and enjoy your yep. life whether you're pontificating or whether you've got some really good points to get across the more we talk the more we learn so have a great week and enjoy the fourth of july take care look 
look forward to speaking to you next week. Get out of those heads and into those hearts. <laughs>